This lesson is going to look at volume of prisms and cylinders. Remember from your previous math classes that volume is simply the space that a figure occupies. We measure volume using cubic units, which is sometimes written as units to the third power. Remember too that when you were in elementary school, you learned that in order to find the volume of a rectangular prism, we multiply the length times the width times the height. And while this formula works wonderfully for a rectangular prism, and you can continue to use this formula for a rectangular prism, it's not very useful when we want to find the volume of any other type of prism. So if we were to looking, look to find the volume of a triangular prism or a pentagonal prism or really any other kind of prism or even a cylinder, the formula that we're going to use is volume is equal to the product of the area of the base which is represented by a capital B in the formula, so capital B represents area, times the height of the prism. So in other words, V equals capital B, and don't confuse uppercase B with lowercase B, that capitalized B represents the area of the base times the height of the prism. And again, it could be a cylinder. But let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at some examples of how we might use this formula in solving some problems. In number one, they've given us this picture of the swimming pool. And they're telling us that a common design for the swimming pool is for the depth to gradually change from the shallow end to the deep. They want us to use the dimensions shown in the picture below in order to find the volume of water that the pool can hold. So I look at the picture and see that it's a prism. And I know that you find the volume of any prism by multiplying the area of the base represented by uppercase B in our formula times the height of the prism. And you don't, incidentally, have to memorize this formula because it is on your reference sheet for high school math. So there's your formula for the volume of a prism. And right underneath it is the formula for the volume of a cylinder. And you may be looking at that formula saying, wait a minute, Mrs. McCann, I thought you said that the formula for the volume of a cylinder was area of the base times the height. And you're right, I did say that. But remember that a cylinder has a circular base. And the formula for finding the area of a circle is pi times r squared. So we could really represent the pi times r squared in that formula by using a capital B, or area of the base, times the height. So that pi r squared h is really just a different representation of capital B times h. All right, but let's go ahead and let's get back to business here. Volume is equal to area of the base times the height. So before we can calculate the volume, we really need to figure out what the shape of our base is here. Remember that in order to be a base, you have to be both parallel to the other base and congruent. So in looking at this picture, the only faces in this picture that are both parallel and congruent are the front face and the back face. So these bases here are really in the shape of trapezoids, making this prism a trapezoidal prism. The lengths of the two bases in this trapezoid are the 10 and the 4, and the height of this trapezoid is actually this 30 feet. And this is where we need to be a very careful, very cautious, not to confuse the area of the base with the length of the base and the height of the prism with the height of the base. So again, this, this base is in the shape of a trapezoid. Its area, or capital B, is going to be equal to half the sum of the two bases times the height of the prism. And again, notice that capital B represents the area of my base. Lowercase b represents the length of the two bases of the trapezoid. So capital B here is a half. The two bases, recall, in a trapezoid are parallel. And the height of the trapezoid is going to be the distance between the lengths of those two bases, or 30. And in order to calculate this area of the base, I'm going to dig out my calculator. And I'm simply going to plug all of those numbers right into my calculator. So I've got a half 
times in parentheses, 10 plus 4, times the height of the prism, which we said was 30. So the area of that trapezoidal base, then, is 210. So I'm going to bring that capital B back over here to my volume formula. So the area of the base, I'm going to substitute 210 into the formula times h. And in this formula, our h is actually the height of the prism. And recall that the height of the prism is the distance between the two bases. So the distance between the prism or the trapezoid at the front of the prism and the trapezoid at the back of the prism in this picture is 15 feet. So I'm going to once again grab my calculator and into my calculator I'm going to compute 210 times 15, which my calculator tells me is 3,150. And this is either cubic feet, or if you'd prefer to write it as feet to the third power, that's fine also. So again, 3,150 cubic feet. All right, so there's an example that looks at um, volume of a prism. In the next one, we're going to take a look at an example dealing with volume of a cylinder. So it tells us this, this cylinder has a height of 8 centimeters and a volume of 402.1 cubic centimeters. They want us to calculate the radius of the base of the cylinder. I'm going to tell you right off the hand I want to round this to the nearest integer. And notice that for this particular example, they don't give us a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and begin by drawing a cylinder. So there's its two parallel and congruent bases. The height of the cylinder, or the distance between those two circular bases, is 8 centimeters. They tell us that the volume is 402.1 cubic centimeters, and they want us to calculate the radius. So I'm going to call the radius x by identifying it as such in my picture. And like the formula for volume of a prism, remember we can find the formula for the volume of a cylinder on the formula sheet. Volume equals to pi times r squared times h. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to write that formula down. And I'm going to substitute in the information I know. In this case, I know the volume is 402.1. So in my formula for volume, I'm going to replace volume with 402.1. Pi, I'm simply going to leave alone. Radius, I let rep be represented by x in my picture, times the height, which is 8. And on the right side of the formula, recall that multiplication is a commutative operation. That is, I can change the order around and not change my answer. So instead of making this pi times x squared times h, I'm going to instead rewrite this is 8 times pi times x squared. And the reason for doing that is in this case I'm trying to solve for the radius or isolate the radius. I think it makes my next step a little bit more clear and then I'm going to divide both sides by 8 pi. And the reason that I chose to divide both sides by 8 pi is that it then isolates my x squared. So I've got x squared all by itself. On the left side, I've got 402.1 over 8 pi. And then in order to solve for x, in order to undo a squaring it, I'm going to square root it. So my x value here, or my radius, is going to be the square root of 402.1 over 8 pi. That is, remember, an exact value. So if this question just said, calculate the radius of the base of the cylinder, my radius of the base of the cylinder, or x, would be equal to the square root of 402.1 over 8 pi. But I'm telling you that in this example, instead of finding an exact value, I now want to round that to the nearest integer. So that to the nearest integer, I'm going to need to go ahead and get my calculator out. 
And into my calculator, I'm going to type in the square root of the fraction, 402.1 for the numerator, and 8 pi for the denominator. Now a lot of times people will say, well, what do they want me to use for pi? There are a lot of different rational uh, approximations for pi that you've seen over the years. Do you use 3.14? Do you use 22 sevenths? If they don't tell you what to use for pi, then we're going to use the pi button on the calculator. And the pi button on the calculator is along the left side. I realize you can't see it on mine, but you'll find it down near the bottom of the calculator keypad on the left hand side. And there's our pi key right there. So when we plug that into our calculator and round to the nearest integer, that radius ends up being approximately 4. So an approximate value here, or a rounded value, is about 4. So again, it's important to differentiate and notice the difference between that exact value and the value that's been rounded to the nearest integer. All right, so I've given you some great things to think about and some good things to digest in this video. As always, I want to thank you for the gift of your time in viewing the video. And in your own words, summarize the key ideas and important understandings. And then check your understanding. See if you can apply what you've learned in the video in order to solve the problems on the following page.